the Holy Gospel according to St. John. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he's been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out, his hands and his feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. And Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God, our Creator, Jesus, our Savior, and the Holy Spirit, who inspires us all. Amen. So who are you remembering on this All Saints weekend? This day that invites you to give thanks for saints from your life who nurtured and cared for you, mentored you in faith, showed you grace, and taught you about the love of Jesus. Today we remember saints now gone, but who, whose influence still shape our lives. Today is a day to remember. And today is a day to hope. To hope in God's powerful promise that death is not, death is not our ending point, but instead death marks a transition to a new life with God. I don't know if you caught this as they were being read, but our scripture readings today are full of these powerful and comforting images of what this new life with God will be like. Not only for our loved ones who have died, but also the hope that is in store for us after we die. The reading from Isaiah points paints a picture of the gathering of all people on God's holy mountain for a feast of well-aged wines and rich food. A place where the shroud of death will be swallowed up and God will wipe away any remaining tears on people's faces. Because it will no longer be a time of weeping, but it will be a time of gladness and rejoicing. Revelation carries similar images. The new life with God means that grief and pain and suffering will be no more. And that death will be no more. And that we will be intimately at home with God and God will make all things new. The Gospel from John is perhaps the most relatable for us Because we know the grief of those sisters, Mary and Martha, as they suffer the illness and the death of their brother, Lazarus. We know that grief. And yet it is into that very human experience that Jesus speaks a word of hope as he calls Lazarus to come out of the tomb. And as Lazarus is still wrapped up in all of the grave clothes, Jesus says, unbind him and let him go. Unbind him, not just from the grave clothes, but unbind him and let him go from the power of death. 
In this story, we catch a glimpse of our promised future. That one day Jesus will call us out of the grave and will unbind us from the power of death. Now even with these scriptures, of course, there is still a lot of mystery surrounding death and what heaven will be like. But these readings do offer us such a clear picture of hope and comfort and joy of how we will experience new life with God after we die. On this All Saints Day, I'm thinking about my oldest brother, Stan, who died 11 months ago at 69 years of age from complications with COVID. Stan spent nearly a month in the hospital, two weeks on a ventilator. Of course, none of our family were able to visit him due to the hospital restrictions. And I have to tell you, as the anniversary of his death is approaching, which is always an important time as we grieve, as that anniversary is approaching, it has been a real gift for me to be reflecting on these scripture passages that we read today because they've been so comforting. And these words from Scripture, I think, have also given me courage today to share something a little out of the ordinary with you in this All Saints sermon. So I hope you'll bear with me as I share this experience with you. So on the night before my brother died, I had a dream about him. And in the dream, I was walking inside of a great cathedral that had massive stone walls. And the altar was high above the congregation with a beautiful stained glass behind it. And the church was full of people. And I had this strong sense that my parents were among the congregation. My parents are both deceased, but I had a feeling that they were there, and part of me wanted to pause and try to find them in the crowd. But there was something that was telling me that if I just kept walking, I would get to see my brother. And so I just walked across the front of the church, and there was a door, and I walked through the door and into a beautiful courtyard. And the courtyard was also full of people. And I could tell that it was the day of a race, a running race. And I should say that for many years my brother was an avid runner. Well, I finally saw a stand in the crowd and I was grateful because I truly did believe that I was never going to get to see him again. And I made my way through the crowd to get closer to him. And as I got closer, I could see that he looked very thin and frail, almost unrecognizable. His body had wasted away, and he clearly had been through a great suffering. But his presence, his presence was joyful, and it was peaceful. And he had an inner light that shone through his face. And he told me that he was glad that he was there on race day, but that he would not be running because his days of running were over. But he said that he would be helping others as they finished the race by unpinning the numbers from their bib as they crossed the finish line. And I later remembered The words in the New Testament found in the book of 2 Timothy where Paul says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. Well, as Stan and I stood there, In my dream, I again had this strong tug to go and look for my parents because I knew that they would want to see my brother as well. But then a calmness 
And an awareness washed over me that, Stan, that told me that Stan would find them soon enough on his own. When I woke up from the dream, the peacefulness and the joy and the light that I saw in my brother's face stayed with me and filled me with hope. And I wrote the dream down as a way to preserve the memory. Maybe I wrote it down so that I could share it with you today. Well, I tell you this dream not because it has any authority on what life with God will be like. I don't know if the dream came from God. But I do know that God used the dream in my life. That God used the dream to draw me closer to these promises found in Scripture that indeed death is not the end of life, but a transition to a new life with God. And maybe you've had a similar experience with a loved one. Maybe someone that uh, you care about had a vision of angels as they came near to death and that drew you closer to God's eternal promises. Or maybe you've known a sense of deep peace in the midst of struggle or an unexplainable joy alongside of your grief. And in those experiences, you just knew that God was near. That God was with you. Well, if you're thinking, well, I've never had an experience like that, hear this. Hear this. You and I are about to have an experience. We're about to share in an experience where we will be drawn closer to God. As we gather around this table, we will share a feast like the one explained in Isaiah. A feast of well-aged wine and rich food supplied by the Lord of hosts. We cling to the promise today that God is with us in this meal, as he promised. And that God will wipe away every tear from our eyes, every tear of grief, with a handkerchief of hope. I love when Pastor Alex talks about this altar, this table, being like a time machine. And when we gather around it for God's feast, we gather not only with each other that are here for worship today, but we gather with the saints, with that great cloud of witnesses who will feast with us. My brother and parents will feast with us. The people that you are thinking of today will be here to feast with us at this table. This table extends beyond this place and this time, and the space between this life and the next becomes very thin when we come to the table. Because here we catch a glimpse of what lies beyond as the corner of the veil of death is lifted. Today we remember the saints who have blessed our lives. And it's a day that we gather around a shared hope that death will not be the end for those saints and that death will not be the end for us. Death will be a transition to a new life with God. When Jesus will call us out of the grave to unbind us from the power of death forever. Amen.